So, the spoilers are out for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 363, and oh my gosh, this is a massive chapter. There's so much that we need to talk about with the spoilers and going into what this chapter is going to be, so let's just get right into it. But first, right after this. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, and boy has it been a while, because in this video, we are going to be covering the leaks for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 363, and these are some massive leaks for a very massive chapter. There is a lot revealed in this chapter, some more confirmation, some setup that was finally coming into revelation in this chapter, and for the most part, the heroes are going to be having a very horrible time, and you'll see why from the spoilers, so let's just dive right into it and really go into what's going to be going on in chapter 363 and why this chapter is going to shake the My Hero Academia fandom. So, for starters, the chapter begins with Monoma thinking back to Bakugo's fighting during joint training when he said that he wanted a perfect win. He can't believe what he's seeing. He screams that it can't be true. Genus is next to Bakugo and confirms that he has no pulse. Now, here's the thing. Even though Best Genus is there and he doesn't confirm a pulse, there is still a very possible, very slim, but still possible chance that Bakugo is still alive because yes, your heart is necessary to, you know, help you stay alive as much as the brain, but when your heart like stops, you don't just die immediately. It does take a little bit more time. So even though he doesn't have a pulse, that doesn't mean that he is necessarily dead because you can have or be alive without actually having a pulse if your heart is extremely weak. So that's something to keep in mind. But from what we're seeing in this chapter, yeah, we're pretty much going down the line of thought that Bakugo is dead and that he may not necessarily be coming back. And with the next part of the text world is Mirio remembers when he said that he would protect everyone until Deku gets there. He's extremely frustrated and Tomura all for one says that now he's dead for good. He taunts Eraser saying that he gave his student too much credit and stood on the back seat. That's why he's disappointed in him. So this is also something interesting. This is showing more of like Tomura all for one and that he still has these tendencies of Tomura than he does of all for one. And just diving into just the trauma that these individuals are going to be going through in this fight, as we see in the next line of the sex spoilers, how Tomura all for one asks, who wants to be Midoriya's new present? And we get to see that he grabbed a Mirko. She says that she should have killed him way back at the lab, but she's not depressed. Quite the contrary, she's angry and is biting off Tomura's finger. So we didn't see Mirko and it makes sense for why she would be mad at Bakugo's death. Even for like the small moments that they shared, they probably bonded over those moments. So yeah, Mirko was mad. She's still fighting because of course she is because that's just who Mirko is. And it's getting very hectic and very dire for the heroes. And we're going to see a little bit more with the next part of the text spoilers, which confirms something going on with Dobby. Because it cuts back over to Kamino and we see Dobby still alive and kicking. He risked it all at that last second and tried copying Shoto's new technique. As a result, he has resisted it and is now burning Kaido and Onima. They're seriously injured. Burden tells Shoto to run. He has that X fire effect on his chest too. So, uh, this is going to be very hectic. Uh, yeah, obviously Dobby wasn't defeated as we saw with like the core or the heat coming off, off of his chest. And from what we see with the small panel, this is most likely the rise in the temperature, what was going on. So, this is going to be very interesting, getting to see what's going on with Dobby and potentially getting to see that uh, Onima and Kaido or Kido may be dead. I hope they're not dead. I actually like them as like characters in the story, but I hope they're not dead. As we get the next line of the text spoilers saying, Choto says that he underestimated Toya, thinking that he only had raw strength. He has polished his quirk by himself for all these years. So he has very polished control over his power. Abi shouts skeptic and a voice starts coming from a device at the giant Nomu's back. 
Skeptic calls Toya a daddy's boy and says he's too busy to respond, but if he's asking about Endeavor's location, he's fighting all for one on Gunga Mountain. We see Tomura all for one again, and he says that they shouldn't have given the villains time to prepare. They should have rushed like Deku wanted. So this is some very interesting developments from this part. First of all, Obviously, Dobby is alive and kicking, but he apparently has even more power and strength than he demonstrated in his fight against Shoto. So most likely, Shoto is going to have to get involved with Dobby in the fight once again, potentially allowing Ida to participate in this fight as well. But we're also getting to see that Skeptic is going to be playing a bigger role in this war. And I saw a little theory about what could counter him, and we will get to that soon enough. But the idea is that Skeptic is about to take control of the hero stuff and take advantage of the entire situation as you have Tomura all for one monologuing about how it was the wrong decision to give the villains to prepare. So we're going to get a little bit more into that because with the next line of the tech spoilers, we have Skeptic is controlling a satellite and keeping track of everyone's location. He apparently communicating directly to many of the villains too, while many other companies were leaving Japan. He was dedicating himself to spreading Redestro's word. The communication in the command room where All Might is has been hacked by Skeptic. That's why Mandalay wasn't able to hear from Deku. The last thing we see from this is that he has an inside map of all the escape routes beneath UA and he started moving something. So this is getting very interesting. We're getting to get a glimpse of what Skeptic is capable of when it comes to his abilities and that he is the reasoning why communication has been halted towards Deku. So this is something very interesting. I can't wait to get a little bit more of this in the chapter and in the coming chapters, but the next few lines of the tech spoilers are even more interesting because we get to see a glimpse of the shelters where the civilians are. The Todoroki family is watching as the Masagaki teacher tells her students to behave, but they are sure five PP man, Bakugo, and the rest will win. But all for one spies are there too, holding their phones. So something interesting is going to be happening with these spies. They're going to get the civilians involved in a very possibly dangerous way. And that potentially because of this, other heroes may come out of the woodwork and may be able to fight off these spies. We do know for a fact that some former heroes are still here. So maybe they'll be inspired to fight back. I don't know. But what we do know is that stuff is going to be going down all over the battlefield and even in areas where the battle isn't occurring. So that's something interesting. But the final line of the tech spoilers takes the cake because the last spread takes us back to Gunga. All for one says that he heard that the last war, the villains were taken by surprise, but not this time. Now they are the ones attacking and the heroes have to defend themselves. They're one step closer to their dream. We see all for one's face. This is what breaks the internet. This is what's going to break the internet for the My Hero Academia fandom. And let me just say this, as a straight black male, I can say, yeah, All For One is fairly attractive. Yeah, you know how uh, Dad For One uh, may have been like a thing? Well, now it's going to be Daddy For One because yeah, he's attractive. Ugh, I, I can't wait to see everyone shipping him with literally every other character. Oh gosh, they're gonna ship him with All Might, aren't they? But yeah. That's all the spoilers that we have for this chapter. Once again, this is probably going to be a fairly short chapter, but a lot of stuff is potentially going to be revealed in this chapter. What's going on with Dobby, what the villains have in store and in, or in plan, the explanation for what's going on with the communication, and more importantly, all for one's face being revealed and potentially more confirmation that Bakugo is dead. There is a lot going on in this chapter and I can't wait to do a more proper review of this chapter when the proper translations come out. So yeah, this is all I have to say for this chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed this chapter. Spoilers, what do you think? Do you think that this is going to be a very hyped chapter? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!